Good morning folks. So it's a new day here at Tappanoff Farm and um, it's a scorcher today. Looks like it's going to be a really hot one. So Rosa and I have got up nice and early so that we could get out and do a bit of work in the market garden before it gets too hot. So we've been setting out some charred transplants and making sure that they don't get frazzled in the sun. And now I'm just coming over to the west field. Walked past Goosewood, which is behind me. And we're in the west field here, which is our um, silver pasture system where we graze the goats uh, primarily, but also the geese. And we're hoping to get the hens in here this year. And on this fine day, we have decided to come out and start getting ready this silver pasture system for its first major grazing event of the year. Uh, the grass is at a great height now for the goats and the geese. And so we're moving fences, we're cutting lines and um, getting ready to bring in the geese, hopefully today. Um, so the goats have Goats have always have had access to the what we call the calf paddock, which is a small holding paddock that we built when we first when we had cattle on the property. Um, so the goats have had the, the calf paddock and this laneway, uh, which leads to a cell in the, one of the first cells in this rotation of grazing laneways between these rows of trees, which is a silver pasture system, is a integration of um, productive tree crops with uh, pasture. So you can see the rows of trees which we planted last year in their tree guards with this quite mature uh, row of willow. And Rosa is here, uh, rolling up some netting. Yep. It's all a bit tangled in the grass. But... Yeah. So we've got a lot of netting that we've had up. Like I said, the goats have been um, allowed to kind of come out from their byre, graze up this laneway. Uh, and into this cell behind me. But they haven't used it very much. No, they've been, <laughs> they've been a bit lazy, but that's all right. And we've only got two goats now. When and we... they're in the north field a lot as well. Yeah, that's very so true. Yeah, Rosa's yeah. been grazing them up in the north field. So, but they've done a little bit. Um, and yeah, we want to pull up the netting because it's starting to get tangled in the long grass. So not best practice, folks. Don't do that at home. <laughs> but sometimes these things happen and suddenly we're running a market garden and everything, things get away from you and you realise that you've got to pay attention to the other systems on the farm and <laughs> another big part of what we do here at Tappanoff Farm is uh, moving animals, growing trees and looking after grass best as we can. Um, so we're here, while it's too hot to work in the market garden, we thought we would come out and uh, start this system off. I've brought the BCS over with our um, scythe bar on it just to cut the lines where we're going to be putting this electric netting um, to contain the geese in this cell. Yesterday I managed to get around and cut quite a lot of our kind of main walking pathways all around the farm so we're going to utilize that on this side of the fence because we've only got we've got a post and wire fence here which obviously isn't going to keep in geese so we're going to put electric netting on the other side of this fence and, and run it up up and around and then down the other side of these trees so the geese will have this Nice cell, which incorporates some of these trees. There's, there's a, a row of hybrid poplar there, which they can help weed out because it's a bit grassy. Obviously with the goats, we put them in cells between the trees, but with the geese and even the chickens, we can include the tree rows. So it means that these really um, grassy bits eventually shade out the um, young trees. Instead of having to constantly cut this back and mulch it, we can use the birds to control that bit. So I think, yeah, that'll be our first time actually including the trees in the cells mm. this year. Um, so, and this cell will be a little bit bigger because we've got a kind of like triangular nubbin that we haven't been able to graze anything in, which is behind the poplars over there. So this will be a nice grazing cell for the geese right now. And I think they're quite hungry because we haven't been able to move them mm. um, recently. So yes. Excited. I'm going to go and milk the goats. Okay, okay great. All right. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Once we've cut the grass for where the electric netting is going to be put up, we're going to have to move the goose house, the portable goose house, over here. Uh, and that will get stationed in this area for the geese to be locked up safely at night time. Um, the geese will be in here for a few days. 
in this cell. But we're going to be moving the goats into this cell, or giving them access to this cell quite soon, maybe tomorrow. So the goats will be grazing in here, the geese will be grazing in here. And we'll just see, we'll monitor that, see how their grazing is going, how fast they're getting through the grass. And we'll, I think we're going to move them on quite fast uh, this time round. And then we're hopefully going to be able to bring in the hens into this first cell with the uh, chickshaw, if we can get it over here. And that'll be great, that'll be three animals um, in the silver pasture system. Three different types of manure, um, all working in different ways. We've got the goats um, browsing and browsing off the, the larger grasses and the more uh, tough and fibrous grasses. Then the geese will come in and do a really good job at grazing the grass down, which will get, hopefully get it to the perfect level that hens like. The chickens don't like too, very tall grass. Um, and then hopefully the chickens will do a good job at dispersing the goat and the goose manure for us, scratching it up and around this, these small fields. Um, hopefully you're starting to reduce fly populations because we end up getting a lot of flies uh, following the goats around at this time of year. Um, so yeah, very excited to see how this goes. Um, this lovely sort of rotational dance of animals. Okay, so I've got to get the BCS, and like I said, I'm just going to cut the uh, lines where the fences are going to go. Um, and then we'll put up the new fences. We'll go and get the goose hoose. And um, see about moving the geese. So we've got this area of hybrid poplar running down as a tree row um, in this silver pasture system here in the west field. So these are very vigorous growing um, poplars. We planted these as one foot cuttings last spring. Um, they got a healthy uh, chewing on from our young uh, goat kid Myrtle. So actually these probably should have been a bit taller than they are now but you can see they're they're almost at my height so I'm about 6'3 and they're getting close to that and could have been bigger. We've planted them here pretty much as a windbreak. Our strongest predominant wind is is from this direction from the sort of uh, west southwest so we're lucky enough to have a large area of trees as our boundary um, but we thought we would just plant this row of fast growing um, poplar uh, for, for a few reasons to act as a, a as a secondary windbreak to the silver pasture system which is behind us because some of these trees are a little bit more uh, sensitive or delicate um, for our climate we've got um, chestnut sweet chestnut growing there and we've also got some black locust that we're experimenting with but another reason we've planted these is that we want to see if this makes a good fuel species um, that we can coppice or pollard 
It's incredibly fast growing and um, quite a hardy tree. It would also make great fodder for the goats. Excited to have these vigorous trees growing, windbreak, wood fuel, fodder for the goats. We'll see how tall they are by the end of this season. That is the majority of the electric netting up in place. Mowed the lines, put up the netting. We've still got to put in a few corner posts and things to give it some rigidity, but it's looking pretty good. Next thing to do is go and get the portable goose house that we made last year and try and get it over here. So this is going to be fun because it's quite far away. It's still in the market garden in the new plot where we had the geese grazing down the grass uh, before we built the new plot and we kind of just left it there. So um, we've got to try and get it here just between the two of us. It's pretty heavy and cumbersome. Um, it's definitely uh, time to think of a new design perhaps. Rose is, Rose is feeling strong. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right. So we've managed to get the goose hoose over into the Westfield silver pasture. Uh, that was quite a workout, uh, but hopefully that's the last time we've had to. We'll have to do that. We've been moving the geese around in that house, getting them to places we want them to graze. Um, but hopefully they're going to be staying in and around this area for quite some time. So if they're in the silver pasture system, they've got their movable house. Um, if they're in goose wood, they've got their permanent house and then if we put them back up, for instance above the market garden where we had them um, at the start of spring, then we'll definitely be building another permanent house for them there uh, until we can make a more movable goose house. <laughs> Oh wow, this seems to be going quite well. They're already tucking into the grass on this laneway area. But there's plenty for them when they get to the actual cell. Right, I need to somehow stop them going up there, but maybe they won't go up there. I don't there. think they will. You go ahead.
Great. Happy. That went well. <laughs> yeah. They've been here before, obviously. Yes, they Quite have. A few times yeah. before. <laughs> They seem happy. I think it's time for us to get some lunch and um, cool down a bit and then we'll carry on later. Yeah, some sewing to do in the garden. Bit of sewing, bit of market garden work. Yeah. 